Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we've got a couple things to discuss. We have some more signing, waiver, and injury updates to talk about today. We have two trades that have happened over the past couple of days. That The Buffalo Sabres have acquired Eric Robinson, and the St. Louis Blues have moved to Portuzo. We'll get to those two trades, plus a couple of trade rumors involving the Edmonton Oilers, Seattle Kraken, uh, possibly a Ducks goalie trade, the Leafs looking for a defenseman, and Ethan Barry possibly getting signed in the not too distant future. We'll get to all that coming up right now. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here at the Internet Hockey Channel. Before we begin this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. We are so close to 100 subscribers. Thank you for all of your support. I would never be able to do so if you guys, so don't forget to subscribe. Now to start today's video off, we do have one recent signing from over the past couple of days. And that is that the Florida Panthers have issued an ELC to one of their young players. A 2022 sixth round pick, Joshua Davies, who is a left winger, has received a three year ELC with an AAV of $855,000. And the will begin possibly this year, maybe next year. but uh, he does get a three-year ELC. So it's a fantastic deal, in my opinion, for the Florida Panthers. Uh, this is one of their young players who has definitely looked really good over the past little while. Uh, he is a sixth-round pick, so this has been really good drafting there from the Florida Panthers if he can been able to turn into a player. Uh, over the past couple of years, he has played in WHL. Uh, two years ago, he was able to put up 36 points in 64 games. Last year, he put up 34 points in 62 games over in the WHL with the Swift Current Broncos. This year, with the Portland Winterhawks over in the WHL. He's already matched last year's point total exactly in basically 40 less games and 23 games so far this year he has 20 goals 14 assists, 34 points, identical to last year's 20 goals, 14 assists, 34 points, except this year, he's done in 23 games, not 62. So he's had a fantastic year over in the WHL this year. He, he was drafted in the sixth round. He looks like eventually he could be a good NHL player, so they signed him to his ELC. Now, I don't expect him to get any pro-level time in the next year or two. I probably think that at least for the rest of this year, and maybe also next year too, he'll stay in the WHL. I think there's possible eventually after that, he'll go over to the AHL for a year or two, uh, get some playing time. Time there, but I think in time he could definitely be a solid like third line forward for the Florida Panthers with the way he's producing right now in the WHL. So this is a really good deal in my opinion. I think Davies eventually should be a really good forward for the Florida Panthers. Like I said, probably gonna need another two to three years in the WHL and the AHL. But eventually, when he's ready to compete for an NHL roster spot, he should be a very fantastic third line forward for the Florida Panthers. And it's another weapon that the Florida Panthers have in the Arsenal for years to come. So really good stuff there from the Panthers. This was a really good draft pick in the sixth round of 2022 draft. Really good draft in there from the Florida Panthers. And I think this was a fantastic uh, pick, in my opinion, that's sort of already starting to pan out with his start to the WHL season this year. So really good stuff there from Davies. And I think eventually he will be a solid NHL forward. At this point in time, he probably has a little bit more developing to do. But like I said, uh, good ELC for the Panthers. And eventually he should be good at a third period forward, in my opinion. So really good stuff there for the Florida Panthers. We got a really good prospect in Joshua Davies, who was a 2022 sixth round pick locked up for the next three years on the ELC. So really good stuff there for the Panthers. Uh, that was the only signing we have over the past couple of days. So we'll go over to a couple of uh, waiver updates. Only one waiver update to talk about. And that is the National Predators placed Liam Foodie on waivers on Thursday. Now, when he, Foodie was first placed on waivers, I thought there was a very likely chance he could get claimed. He was claimed by Nashville after Columbus put him on waivers. So I thought there was also a chance Columbus could have claimed him, uh, put him down to their minor league affiliate. I thought that was a very likely possibility, given the fact that Foodie was recently claimed. Uh, so I thought that either another team would have a shot at him, uh, someone who probably has a lot of injuries or could use another young forward, or Columbus could have possibly reclaimed him and sent him down to their AHL affiliates. Uh, but none of that actually happens. Foodie winds up clearing, which surprised me a little bit. Uh, so Foodie, who could have been reclaimed by Columbus, could have been claimed by another team, uh, winds up clearing waivers and is sent down to Nashville Predators AHL affiliate. So that's fantastic news for Nashville. We're going to be able to keep a good young forward in uh, Foodie for the next little while. Uh, if they run into some more injuries, it could definitely be easily a call-up option. But that's definitely a little bit surprising to me. I thought Foodie would have definitely garnered a lot of interest. He's a former first-round pick. He's a decent, at this point in time, bomb six forward who could definitely be a really good player. I think he can definitely still be a guy who puts up points in the bomb six. So I thought there would have definitely been some uh, people who would have uh, had some interest in adding a guy like Liam Foodie. So I'm a little bit shocked that Foodie wound up clearing waivers and wasn't claimed by anyone. Uh, but the Preds are able to clear him and he does wind up going back to the minors. So really good stuff there from Nashville to wind up clearing Liam Foodie.
foodie, uh, but there's definitely an interesting thing there for Nashville. So it'll be interesting to see, but that's a really good move there for Nashville to clear Liam Foodie, put him in the minors, and now they have another solid call-up option. There's going to just some more injuries, so really good stuff there for Nashville, although I am a little bit surprised that nobody claimed him, including Columbus, who could have reclaimed him and sent him down to their minor league affiliate. So really interesting stuff there, but unlike Fagimo, who was placed on waivers after they claimed him and was reclaimed by LA, Nashville's able to clear Liam Foodie, and he goes back down to the minors, so really good stuff there for Nashville. Uh, going over to a couple of injury updates around the NHL. Over the past couple of days, we've had a couple of injuries. For Thomas Shabbat, who recently came off of injury reserve after dealing with an arm injury, long-term injury reserve, he was out for just over a month. He has now got, suffered a leg injury that's going to keep him out another month. This is a bad, bad blow for the Ottawa Senators who lose Shabbat for yet another month. He's going on long-term injury reserve. He's going to be out for, at the very least, 10 games or 24 days. This is a very bad blow for the Ottawa Senators. So horrible news there. Hopefully they're able to overcome the loss of Shabbat. Uh, for some of the other injuries that have happened over the past couple of days, Andre Svechnikov has upper body injury. He's out day to day. Uh, Charlie McAvoy has upper body injury. He's out day to day. Joseph Wall has a leg injury. He's out for an unknown period of time. Rasmus Dahlin missed the uh, Sabres last game due to a lower body injury. He's out day to day, but it seems like he should be able to uh, be back in the game action today. So really good stuff there for the Sabres. Uh, but also, Travis Dermott has been clear play by the Arizona Coyotes. Blake Lazat by the LA Kings. Cogliano and Byram and Makar for the Colorado Avalanche, as well as Thomas Novak for the National Predators. So really good stuff to see all of those guys get back into game action and are clear to play. Uh, on top of that, Boone Jenner suffered a face injury in yesterday's game. He's going to be out for an unknown period of time. Isaiah Seville, who was a uh, player who was placed on season opening injury reserve by Vegas Golden Knights, has been cleared to play. He's going to be sent down to the minors, so really good stuff there for Vegas. Pluck has a lower body injury for New York Islanders. He's going to be out for an unknown period of time. Andre Burakovsky has an upper body injury. Uh, he's out week to week right now for the uh, Seattle Kraken, so really bad stuff there. Max Pacioretty, who was Achilles injury, uh, was still recovering after signing with the Washington Capitals this offseason. He's going to be out for probably another two weeks, so once again, Pacioretty, who's recovering from an Achilles injury, still needs a little bit of time before he's ready to get in the game action, so it'll be interesting to see. TJ Oshie's injury, which is an upper body injury, is going to be a game time decision for the Caps game tonight, so it'll be interesting to see if he gets into game action. Uh, Jack Quinn, who's missed the entire season due to an Achilles injury this year, is now only out day to day at this point in time. So really good stuff there for Buffalo uh, as they are close to getting uh, Quinn back. Uh, Nico Dawes who was placed in season opening injuries reserve this the season has been cleared to play. I expect him to go back down to the minors and be a good third string goaltender for the Devils. So really good stuff there. Uh, then we also, like we said, Dalian has been cleared to play. He should be able to get back into today's game. Uh, Joseph Wall's ankle injury has been updated to week to week. So that's an awful news for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Boone Jenner's jaw injury has been updated. He's going to be out for six weeks. So that's awful news for the Columbus Blue Jackets who are going to be losing uh, their captain for the next month and a half round. So it's really bad blow for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, Jonas Brodeen has a lower body injury. He's going to be out for another period of time for the Minnesota Wild. So that's an awful injury news for the uh, Minnesota Wild, who is a solid top four defenseman. Meanwhile, Sean Jersey has recovered from his injury, and he's going to be back into game action, hopefully, in today's game against Boston Bruins. So lots of good injury updates there with guys like Jersey, Novak, uh, McCarr being cleared to play, getting back into game action. But for guys like Wool, who's going to be out week to week, uh, for a guy like Pacioretty, who's going to be out for a couple of weeks. For Jenner, who's going to be out for a month and a half. For Shabbat, who's going to be missing another around month due to an injury. Those are all really bad injury blows for those players. And hopefully they're able to recover and get back in the game action. But this was a really bad blow for those guys. And hopefully they can recover in the not just the future. But definitely really bad injury updates for those teams. Going on to a couple of trades that we've had over the past couple of days. Now, I forgot to mention this one in my last video. But on Wednesday, we had a trade between the Buffalo Sabres and Columbus Blue Jackets involving forward Eric Robinson. The Columbus Blue Jackets trade Eric Robinson to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for a conditional 2025 7th round pick. Now, we'll start with the Buffalo Sabres. This is a very buy low option for them. Uh, Buffalo could definitely use another bomb 6 4. They need someone who could be a, a very good physical type forward for the Buffalo Sabres. And uh, this is a really good pickup, in my opinion. For the Buffalo Sabres, uh, Eric Robinson's a, in the final year of his contract. He's got this year left at $1.6 million cap. It, so it's not like he's a long term option there for Buffalo. Uh, he hasn't really fit in well with the Columbus Jackets this year. In past years, he has. Uh, the past two seasons, two years ago, he had 10 goals and 27 points in 67 games. Last year, at 12 goals, 24 points in 72 games. Uh, there was a lot of talk that he was going to be traded this year. After playing in seven games, putting up a goal, uh, not 
fitting in over well and then being sent down to the AHL, but with a $1.6 million cap it, that even though a lot of teams were really wanted him, uh, the number of teams could really afford him, so that was really bad stuff there from the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, but they were able to find a taker in Buffalo. In the AHL, they put up four points in nine games, which wasn't really overly bad for uh, Eric Robinson. Like I said, he's a very fantastic third, fourth line forward, can definitely fit in a team's bottom six, and with Buffalo dealing with a couple of injuries, on top of needing a good, solid bomb six forward, who could definitely uh, bring some physicality to the team, I think this was a fantastic pickup for Buffalo Sabres. He already played in his first NHL game with the Buffalo Sabres. He got a plus one rating and no points. In a game against the Boston Bruins, he also thought he had a goal that was just called off later on. So it wasn't a fantastic debut for Robinson with the Buffalo Sabres, but he still had a very fantastic game. I think long term he should be able to establish himself as a solid bomb 6 forward for the Buffalo Sabres. And I think this is a really good deal, in my opinion, for Buffalo. They get a solid bomb 6 forward. Don't give up too much in asking price, and he's a pending UFA. So if it doesn't work out overly well, they can just move on from him in the offseason. So that's not really a bad move there for Buffalo. And they have a ton of cap space, so taking on his $1.6 million cap it is not something that's going to be overly concerning for them. As for Columbus Blue Jackets, there was a lot of talk that they were going to try and trade him. They wind up doing so. It's not an overly bad move there from the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets who were able to trade him and get $1.6 million in cap space that they're able to work with now. And the uh, 2025 seventh round pick is conditional. The condition on that is uh, the 2025 seventh round pick, which is originally Nashville's, which Buffalo has, will be moved to Columbus Blue Jackets if Eric Robinson plays in 45 NHL games this year. So it will be interesting to see, but uh, this is a really good move for both sides. The Jackets get a draft pick if Robinson plays in 45 games uh, for a player who they were not using at the NHL level and is a pending UFA, so they weren't going to resign anyway. The Buffalo Sabres get a solid bomb six forward who can be a decent uh, contributor in the bomb six, can be a really good bomb six forward, and is a player who they could definitely use as a solid depth forward. So really good stuff there from Buffalo and Columbus. And then yesterday we saw a trade between the Blues and the Islanders. The St. Louis Blues moved depth defenseman Robert Bertuzzo to New York Islanders in exchange for the Islanders 2020 for seventh round pick. So once again, a depth trade, not a huge trade, but Bertuzzo is a player who's been in the NHL for quite some time now. He's in the final year, a two year deal with the AV of $950,000. So he's a decent depth defenseman. He's played over 530 games in his NHL career, putting up 20 goals and 74 points. Uh, so far this year with the Blues, he hasn't really been able to get into very many games. Uh, the Blues have been playing up to this point, I think like 26, 27 games. He only has four games of NHL action this year, putting up no points. Last year, he only played in 43 NHL games, putting up five points. So over the past couple of years, he hasn't done really well. He hasn't broken double digit point totals since the 18-19 season when he had 10 points in 59 games. So not really great stuff there from Bertuzzo when he wasn't getting very much of an NHL chance especially with guys like Peronovich and Tucker trying to get into an NHL roster for the St. Louis Blues. So not overly shocked that he was moved. Uh, he's a decent like I said, depth defenseman. He can be a good 6th, 7th defenseman. Uh, the Islanders are currently have some injuries with guys like Pulak. I think Pelik's out right now too. So Bertuzzo is uh, really inexpensive for it. And $950,000, so not someone that's going to be overly expensive to try and keep. He should be able to fit on the third pair for the New York Islanders. They think he should be a very fantastic addition for the New York Islanders, so this is a really good addition. Definitely get a really good player here. He's depending UFA, so he's not going to be costing them overly much over the next little while. He can definitely fit in overly well over the next uh, couple of games. So they'll continue to try and get healthier with guys like Pulak and Pelik, and I think Aho too, trying to get back from injuries. Uh, so Bertuzzo can definitely be a good solid third pair defenseman, and when those guys get back, he should be able to be a solid seventh eighth defenseman on a healthy New York Islanders blue line. So a very fantastic pickup there for the Islanders. Depth defenseman, not too expensive. Who can definitely work as like a solid sixth, seventh defenseman for a time being and eventually a seventh, eighth defenseman. Uh, Meanwhile, for the St. Louis Blues, uh, they get a seventh round pick in the 2024 draft. So not a whole bunch there for Bertuzzo, but he's more of a depth defenseman at this point in time. So not overly shocked. That wasn't a huge ask to get Bertuzzo. And he also wasn't getting into very many games. And he was also a pending UFA. So it didn't seem like the Blues were going to keep him around long term. So I'm not overly shocked that the Blues made this deal. So Islanders get a solid 6th, 7th defenseman, someone who can play on the third pair, while guys like Pelik and Pulak are out, uh, someone who's going to be a very good veteran leader on that Islanders blue line. You know, for the Blues, you get a 7th round pick for someone who was not going to be remaining with the team long term. So really good move there from both sides, and I think this is a really good move from each side. So really good stuff there from those two trades. I think in the Bertuzzo trade, I think the Islanders do win this trade. I think Bertuzzo is going to be a really good depth addition. And I think 
and the Sabres win the Eric Robinson trade is a conditional seventh round pick for a Saul bomb six forward, in my opinion, is a win for the Sabres. So really good stuff there for both of those teams as the Jackets clear some cap space, Blues clear a roster spot, but the Sabres and the Islanders get some pretty good players for just the seventh round pick. So really good trades there from those four teams. We'll have to wait and see when the next trade is going to be. And now going over to a couple of trade rumors. First was Ethan Bear. Bear was a player who played with the Vancouver Canucks last year. There was a lot of talk that he was going to remain with Vancouver, but he got injured in the World Juniors with uh, Team Canada. He was a guy who would need to be issued over a $2 million qualifying offer. After being injured, the Vancouver Canucks said that was too much money for them. So he wound up not being qualified. He went to being a free agent after not being qualified by Vancouver Canucks. Uh, he's been dealing with an injury still. He's been rehabbing back from it. It seems like he's starting to near return to uh, game action. And just like Kane did a couple of weeks ago, uh, now it seems like Bear's going to be doing the exact same thing. It sounds like there's a lot of teams interested and it sounds like Bear could be nearing a return not just in future, prompting a lot of teams to be interested. Uh, on the recent Insider Trading video, Chris Johnston said that there are a couple of teams interested in Bear. Uh, the Canucks continue to have interest. We've said that before in the past couple of uh, videos that the Canucks could try and look to bring back Bear. This is all, like I said, maybe at this point in time, third pair of defensemen. Uh, there's other teams who do have interest. Uh, teams like the New Jersey Devils, Pittsburgh Penguins, Washington Capitals are teams that I've heard that have some interest on the Insider Training video. Uh, there could be some other teams as well. It seems that there's a lot of teams. Uh, he's invited people to watch him train in Kelowna. So there's going to be a, a, probably a decent amount of teams out there who could definitely want Bear. Uh, like I said, last year he was a solid second pair of defensemen for the Vancouver Canucks. He's also a right shot defenseman, which makes him even more of a hot commodity. I think there's going to be a couple of teams out there who definitely use a top four right shot defenseman who they don't need to trade assets for and who they can just sign for money so it's going to be interesting to see it's probably going to be a bidding war for him and some of these teams who don't have a ton of money like vancouver uh maybe like a pittsburgh may wind up being some of the teams who aren't able to get him because they don't have enough cap space to sign him so it will be interesting to see but it sounds like bear is starting to pick up a lot of steam and it sounds like we could get a bear signing in the not just in future so that'll be interesting to see but ethan bear who was a good tall four defenseman last year got injured was not qualified by vancouver canucks became a ufa and is now trying to get back into game action uh it seems like he's going to be uh signing in the not just in future with another team so it'll be interesting to see there uh going over to the toronto maple leafs uh According to a couple of reports that I've seen over the past little while, first on insider trading, uh, apparently it sounds like uh, the Maple Leafs do have some interest in a couple of players, uh, but currently the prices are too high for them to try and acquire the fence. Now they do have a couple of injuries right now. Uh, John Klingberg, uh, with him being placed on injury reserve, as we talked about in our last video, this frees up a ton of money for them to go after the fencemen, but apparently the prices at this point in time are too high. Uh, it sounds like the hand will cost at the very least a second round pick at this point in time. It doesn't seem like Toronto really wants to pay that to acquire Tanav. According to Insider Trading, it sounds like Sean Walker could, at this point in time, be needed to give up a first round pick to acquire his service. So it's going to be interesting to see if they could pull off that. I don't think they would want to do that at this point in time. So it would be interesting to see, but it sounds like all the defensemen that are currently available at this point in time, like Walker, uh, Tanav, maybe even Ristolainen, Dumba Fuel is available for the Arizona Coyotes. They all have really high asking price for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So it seems like the Leafs are probably going to have to wait a little bit, wait for the asking prices to go down before they try and acquire the fencemen. And on top of that, Elliot Firmino on his recent 32 Thoughts podcast did say that uh, Tanav continues to be one of the top uh, targets there for the Toronto Maple Leafs and they would really like to try and acquire him. Uh, Flames may be trying to hold on for right now. They're still right around the 500 mark. They're not doing overly badly as they were earlier in the season. So there's a lot of talk that they could still try and uh, maybe not move all these players at this point in time so we'll be interested to see uh, but it sounds like they'll have to wait if they want to try and go after Tanev uh, he says that Walker and Sealer guys in Philadelphia who are pending UFAs could be uh, lesser options there for the Toronto Maple Leafs so it will be interesting to see who the Leafs wind up acquiring and when it happens but it seems like at this point in time Tanev's the top end player who they really want Calgary may not be wanting to make a move at this point in time with them being not too far out of a playoff spot. And it seems like with all the prices being so high, Tana possibly for a second, Walker possibly for a first, Ristolainen and Dumba not coming cheap if they were to be available. Uh, it sounds like there would be uh, a lot of problems there for the Leafs as the asking price. So it will be interesting to see, but it sounds like the Leafs are probably gonna have to wait a little bit to acquire the fencemen at this point in time. And it seems like they will have to try and add a fenceman when the prices go a little bit lower. So it will be interesting to see there. Next, going over to the Edmonton Oilers, there's been a lot of talk that Philip Broberg is from frustrated and wants out of Edmonton. It seems like the Oilers are willing to accommodate his move. Uh, so it will be interesting to see if Broberg gets moved and when, but the former first round pick's not done overly well with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, he's not gotten the best of NHL opportunities. He's back down the AHL right now. Uh, he's a solid 
somewhat of a third pair of defenseman at this point in time in the NHL level, but the Oilers don't view him as that, so he's back in the AHL. Uh, it seems like he's going to get top permanence there, but it sounds like it's a road's coming to an end for Edmonton and Broberg. It sounds like eventually they will try and trade him. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they would want for Broberg. Uh, he was a first-round pick, but he has not played like a first-round pick, so I could see him just for Broberg, possibly try and get another young prospect who has not fit over well with their current team, or maybe like a second or third-round pick. That could be something I could see team try and trade for Broberg, but I could also see Broberg be dealt in a bigger package for the Oilers to get a bigger upgrade uh, later on in the season, so it will be interesting to see, but Broberg's name is now out there. Uh, there was a lot of talk before the season that he could be available, and now it seems like due to and not having a big enough role with the team, that Broberg's sort of fed up with being in Edmonton, and it seems like he does want out, so it will be interesting to see, but it sounds like Broberg uh, is going to be moved at some point. I'm not exactly sure when, and I think if it was just for Broberg, it will probably be a second or third round pick, or maybe a prospect who's not done over really well in his current situation, so I could see that be acquired by the Edmonton Oilers. On top of that, I also think that the uh, Edmonton Oilers, if they wanted to, could move Broberg as like a prize prospect and a bigger trade to improve their team, whether it be in goal or defensively. So it would be interesting to see, but it sounds like Broberg's time in Edmonton is coming to an end, and eventually he will be moved at some point. But like I said, second, third round pick or another uh, not overly great prospect could be uh, things that the Edmonton Oilers could acquire via trade. Meanwhile, uh, they could try and move him in a big package as a solid prospect to try to improve their defense or their goal tank. So it will be interesting to see, but Broberg's time in Edmonton is coming to an end. It seems like eventually he will be moved. Uh, going over to the Seattle Kraken, uh, Elliot Freeman did mention on the 32 Thoughts podcast recently that uh, a player whose name has been coming up that uh, Elliot Freeman said that a lot of people are asking about is Adam Larson in Seattle. Could Seattle Kraken wind up trading Adam Larson? Now, they have a really good defensive group in this uh, system. They have Oleksiak, they have Dunn, they have Borgen, who's actually turned out to be a really good defenseman. Uh, he signed for a couple of years. Uh, they also mentioned that he could be a possible name in the South there, too. But I think that he's younger. He's a really big body. I think he'd be less likely and would need a bigger asking price to move him. Uh, but they have Oleksiak. Shell's in the final year of his deal. Uh, they also have a couple of other decent defensemen. Uh, Riker Evans got into his first NHL game. He seems to be a solid deep prospect who should eventually be a solid top four defenseman for the Kraken. So they have a lot of really good prospects in that team. So there's a lot of talk that they need a NHL level scorer. They need a really good scorer. So they were talking on the 32 Thoughts podcast saying that maybe Larson could be moved for a scorer. Elliot Freeman did say that he seems like Eric Francis could be a guy who at one point it doesn't sound like there's anything there and then boom, there's another big trade for the Kraken. So uh, the Nia scorer last year they had a lot of really good depth scoring, but they've lost Sprong. Tolvanen's moved up to the lineup, so he's not where he was last year. They haven't had as much depth scoring and it's really hurt them this year as they're 8, 13, and 6. They're still in the playoff race, but they're not doing overly well. They're five games below 500. They play a lot more games to anyone else, so they're not doing overly well. I do think if this continues at some point, they will probably turn to being sellers, and guys like Wenberg, Eberle, and Shells could all be on the market, but for the time being, they still want to try and be competitive, they want to try and make the playoffs, and they need another legit top six winger to do so. So it would be interesting to see uh, if they were able to move Larson to get a top six winger. I think that's a possibility. Uh, it would have to be a really good top six winger. I think there would still have to be some pieces involved. But I think Seattle is going to be an interesting team to watch over the next little while. I think if they continue to fall like they have been, I think guys like uh, Shells, Eberle and Wenberg, who are all pinning UFAs, could wind up being moved. Uh, but I think also that if they are able to stay in the playoff mix, maybe they try and make a big package to move a, a couple of pieces to try and bring in a solid top six forward. They don't have a ton of casualties. They'll probably do money in, money out. But I think if they can move a top four defenseman to acquire a top six scorer, I think they will be willing to do that. And on top of that, they have a lot of picks and prospects still in their system. Uh, they have a couple of picks for this upcoming draft. The prospects, especially four prospects in their system, are absolutely insane. So they have a ton of draft capital on prospects if they were interested in trying to make a move. But it's, it's interesting to hear Adam Larson's name on the table, possibly. Uh, Larson, I think, has this year plus one or two more seasons at a $4 million cap it. So it would be interesting to see, but I think Larson would be a very fantastic addition for the team who needs a top four right shot defenseman. And I think if the Kraken could get a top six score out of it, they would definitely be willing to make that move. So it will be interesting to see, but it seems like Larson could possibly be a guy whose name is on the block. And if he is, uh, that would only be a possible move, in my opinion, if the Kraken are able to get a solid top six goal score. So it'll be interesting to see. And lastly here, could the Anaheim Ducks trade John Gibson to a team like the New Jersey Devils 
or the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, Elliot Freeman did say on the 30 Thoughts podcast that uh, Anaheim could still try and move John Gibson. They started really well this year. Uh, they had a six-game winning streak. They were at 9-6-0 at one point in time, but they've now lost 10 of 11. Uh, they're down to 10-16-0. Oh, they're back down to the team who's one of the lower ones in the standings. And it seems that there's a very likely chance that like, the Ducks probably don't wind up making the playoffs this year. And if that's true and Gibson has another lost season, I think there's a very likely chance Gibson's going to be enough frustrated that he's going to wind up asking for a trade out. So I think a Gibson trade could wind up coming either before a trade deadline or in the offseason. But he mentioned two teams who could try and add a goaltender in New Jersey and Carolina who he thinks could possibly work for Gibson. New Jersey, he thinks that Gibson would be a perfect fit there. He says there would be a lot of things that need to work, but Vanacek and Schmid have not done overly well this year. The goaltending has been one of the weakest points of the New Jersey Devils team. They have one of the worst goaltending uh, stats in the uh, NHL. And they could definitely benefit from adding a startled NHL goaltender. Now, they do have a lot of picks and prospects that they could use as a trade piece. So, I, I think they could possibly move like a first-round pick, a decent-level prospect, and a guy like Vitek Vanacek to uh, Anaheim to make it work. I think that would be a really decent deal. It would really help uh, take the New Jersey Devils, the goaltending, to the next level. It would really help that team uh, better down the hatches on the goal tank side so this team also needs a defenseman but they also really really need a goal tank. I think Gibson will be a fantastic fit for Jersey as for Carolina uh, it sounds like according to Elliot Freeman it's not guarantee but there's a lot of people that think that Frederick Anderson could wind up being done for the season now and with that possibly being the case there's a lot of people who think that the goal tank tandem of Ranta and Kochekov are not going to carry them through the playoffs this year and even though Kochekov has some talent uh, he's not done overly well this year neither is Ranta so they could definitely use an upgraded net. Uh, Randerson's signed for next year too, so they'll have to work that out cap-wise, uh, but they could definitely possibly like trade like a first-round pick, some sort of a prospect, and then maybe like anti Ranta to the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for John Gibson. I think that would work. Uh, now the, both those teams don't have too much in cap space, and Gibson does make a decent amount of money, so they have to make it work that way too. But I think that a team like New Jersey especially could definitely benefit from adding a John Gibson to their team. It would definitely improve that team to the next level on the goaltending side of things. Uh, as for Carolina, I don't think they need him as much, but after their goaltending performances early on in the season without Frederick Anderson, I think they could definitely benefit from adding a guy like John Gibson if Anderson is going to be out for the rest of the season. So it will be interesting to see, but Carolina's not overly well in goaltending. New Jersey's not overly well in goaltending. A big reason why those two are out of the top three in the Metro Division right now. And I think if they could improve their goaltending, they'll definitely both be considered to be legit cup contenders, in my opinion, in the Eastern Conference. So we'll be interested to see. But apparently Gibson could be made available uh, by Anaheim Ducks. They've had a really sour stretch. They could be willing to trade him. They have those style now as their starting goaltender, so they wouldn't be overly opposed to moving Gibson. Gibson could definitely use a fresh start, uh, go on a team that has cup aspirations. And I think teams like the Devils and Carolina Carolina Hurricanes could make substantial offers to the Anaheim Ducks, possibly even before a trade line to improve their goal tank situation. So we'll be interested to see. But that's what I'm going to talk about for today. I'll share your guys' thoughts on all this down in the comment section below. Uh, what do you think about Gibson? Does he get moved to Carolina? Could he get moved to Jersey? Is there another team out there who could definitely use him? I'll share your guys' thoughts on that. Do you see the Seattle Kraken moving Adam Larson? If so, where do you think would be a best fit for him? And do you think if they moved him, they could get a top six solid goal scorer? Definitely, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Uh, do you see the Toronto Maple Leafs acquiring a defenseman? Is it Tanev? Is it Walker or Sealer or Ristolainen or Dumba? Or is it someone else? And if it's someone else, who do you think they acquire? And do you think that they would have to pay a really high price to do it? Or do you think they wait until closer to the deadline when the prices are a little bit lower? Definitely love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Do you think Broberg gets moved by the Edmonton Oilers and not just in the future? If so, where does he get moved? And is it just Broberg, or is Broberg get moved for a bigger package? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. And uh, where do you think Barry goes? Is it Washington? Is it Jersey? Is it Pittsburgh? Is it Vancouver? Where do you think he ends up signing at the end of the day? Definitely love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Plus, what do you think about the two trades with Robinson going to Buffalo, with Bertuzzo going to NYI? And on top of those two trades, what do you think about the injury updates, waiver updates, and signing? Definitely love to hear your guys' thoughts on all this down in the comment section. But that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video, and if you're related to it, remember to subscribe down below. We're so close to new subscribers. Thank you for all of your support. I'll never be able to do so. If you guys don't forget to subscribe, uh, I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So definitely check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And can't wait to see you guys all for next video. See you guys soon.